scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are different systems of time redemption. You don't redeem time by... Um, doing anything about it in terms of stopping it from moving. No. There are things you introduce. Are we together now? It's very important. One of the tokens of advantage over time is the power of prophecy. Now listen very carefully. You see, the realm of the spirit is like if you know a movie director... We have not started tonight's lecture. I'm just responding to what, what, listen, listen, please listen. Now, now listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is like a script, but no time is attached to them. Are we together? Scripts of possibilities that reflect the will of God and his counsel, but no time is attached to them. It is part of the ministry of the prophetic to allocate the timings for their manifestation. That means if I have been delayed so that what should happen to me 10 years was delayed, the prophetic can reach out and shift that scene to my future to make it happen. So the Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. These are systems of advantage. It is on this strength that the Bible, Paul speaking by the intelligence of the spirit, he said, for we know that all things, in other words, no matter what your disadvantage is. In fact, I'm teaching what I taught yesterday, really. I taught a little of this uh, at home before I came. That means if I lose my father and my mother, according to the progression of human existence, I'm already disadvantaged. There is something they represent that cannot be easily replaced. So I will have to search by the intelligence of the spirit what system of advantage has been provided to remedy these kinds of constraints. There has to be something in God's economy that can play the role of a father. So when we say receive favor, most of us who teach it do not teach it connected to an eternal purpose. We just isolate it as if it's just for you to prosper. So the richness of what it provides, we cannot know why, to what end. When I'm, when I'm praying for a woman to have a child, I'm more concerned about validating my call than connecting her to something that is higher and greater than the ego of a man. You see where the problem is? Yes. They are called systems of advantage. This is why in a meeting like this, the Holy Spirit comes not only to bless people, but when the atmosphere is set, one of the things he does is you have to reach out to people and find the various constraints in their lives and supply different dimensions that can help accelerate them. So it's possible that we are seated here and while you are listening to the word, you are supposed to be doing something that will move your life. He's not an irresponsible person. He knows you should be in your shop now. And he knows that your sales of this night should at least be 100,000. So you are sacrificing 100,000 to hear him. There is a system in his economy that will make what you will get tomorrow 
a million. And he tells you, you see, the justice of God has played out. So you never feel afraid when you are in his presence. Because you know that when you are in his presence, the more you wait, you run faster. It's a technology in the spirit that every time you want to run, the secret is to wait on the Lord. Was it not said that they that wait upon the Lord, they will what? Mount up with wings. We have systems of advantage. The one who designed this system is intelligent enough. He factored the limitations of this entity called man. Are we together? Yes. So you don't move around like someone who has been scammed by God. God, I gave you this. I gave you that. And then we must trust God for teaching priests who will expose us to these spiritual arsenals. And then you can stand up and say, though I lost my father, though I lost my mother, I came for this conference and I found out that something in God's economy can play that role. It becomes a system of comfort. It's why the Holy Ghost is called a comforter. You don't comfort people by, that mourn by cleaning their tears. No. If they stole something and you are crying, and I tell you, well, this can solve the same problem. It will comfort you. Praise the Lord. I intended to answer two questions. I answered only one. I can't remember what the other one is. Anyway, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's hold hands together and pray. God bless you. Pray in the spirit for tonight. It's a revival series. We are here to obtain wisdom. Prato sapra dis kebra shuste ke lekato sabrende ke de balatas. Pradi jalekate prendis ke de barutisia. There is a making, there is a formation that is happening in us. Shalabanda skata pras ke de bahashalabas. Jigete prendis ikale bariyaba. Ale prende get a paradusi. Croto sopra di gide balada 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 bash. She paruta sata prende get a patusi ala haskata brooks. Remember, I told you this is a solemn assembly. You're not praying just for yourself. Kibalandes kaparus kadi hashala barakotos. Shepratus kadi predi kadi balada balada balada. You reign, you reign, hello King. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign. You reign. Hello, King. You reign. You reign. Hello, King. Yeah, na 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 na. Na 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 na, yeah, yeah, yeah. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na. You reign, you reign, and oh. walk with you man hallelujah hallelujah 
the Holy Spirit just reminded me of the second thing I was to say. Please listen. Listen, we'll sit down shortly. Two things I said, and while we were singing, the Holy Spirit just reminded me. Remember, the Bible says he will bring to your remembrance. Hallelujah. The second thing I wanted to talk about is, very briefly, let me show you how God transforms men in this kingdom. Transformation is difficult without a reference. I'm just buttressing on what Pastor Dele shared. You cannot become nothing. You cannot change into nothing. There has to be a reference. And the way God does it, please listen very carefully, is that aside from his word, that is a compendium of his methodology. Are we together now? Men are changed when they behold men. Not just words. Are we together now? So what happens is that God in his system, when he's training you, he will personify what he wants you to be in a person and recommend that you understudy that person. So in God's economy, every dimension he wants to reveal, there is a person to represent it. So when he wants to show you what it means to be blessed in the kingdom, Isaiah 51 says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body, for I called him and blessed him and increased him. Are we together now? Yes. When you want to see how to manipulate difficult challenges and thrive, they recommend Isaac to study what happened that Isaac sowed in a land and reap that same year. If you desire an encounter with God, the personality that represents the office of encounter in the Bible is Jacob. Are we together? This is the generation of them that seek thy face. Oh, it's not Jacob, it's God of Jacob. The God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac. It's not the God of Jacob. He is God. But all those dimensions are revelations of different parts of him. What the God of Abraham will give you, the God of Jacob will not give you. No. When you want to know God, he refers you to Jacob. So you have to journey from chapter 28 of Genesis. The first encounter where he missed it and he got up. So in case you are backsliding and you want to return back, there is hope for you because Jacob missed that encounter. So you find out what he did first. Between the first encounter and the second was the encounter in the house of Laban. There was a level of innocence that Jacob had that did not allow him to know God. So he passed through the house of Laban. And by the time we get to chapter 32, he was ready. He dismissed his wives and his cattle and all of that. And then a man came to him and he held him. He said, this time I won't miss it. I will not let you go. And then you see how God blesses people. That he blesses people by changing their names. So you find out. When you want to understand how to use the ministry of prayer and the prophetic... To legislate God's counsel over a territory. The personality that is referred, you are referred to is Elijah. James chapter 5. Are we together? Don't, don't go there. I'm just answering the second question. We'll touch a bit on it, I hope. So, the Bible takes us and organizes those men. The Bible calls them elders. And he tells us they are obtained a good report so you now begin to study them through faith Abel offered there is a kind of offering that will take faith so when that happens don't be afraid understudy Abel how he offered a more excellent sacrifice that got to heaven so if your offering is not bringing returns go back to Abel what did Abel do because Abel and Cain is a contrast of two givers and one did not get results. So if your giving life is faulty, there is a personality. Help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes by your spirit. 
in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Conferences like this are feasts of mysteries. It's amazing how Jesus made his disciples to become apostles. He spent time teaching them every day, every time. Even when he was on the cross, he knew he had not finished the lecture. As soon as he resurrected, they saw him say, there's no time to celebrate me. Let's get to the lecture quickly. I have 40 more days with you and I need to teach you before the Holy Spirit comes. And Acts chapter 1, he spent 40 days teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. After that, he said, fine, you can go. I'm done with you. It is the word of God that not only purifies but enlightens. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to just continue from where we left off and where I believe that God has been building all through this conference. We are dealing with the matters of revival. We are dealing with the matters of the move of God. Please don't forget, we are dealing with the matters of destiny as far as the program of God is concerned. You will study from scripture and history that many things that were captured in this Bible, um, when you study history, you will know that many other activities on earth were happening concurrently when certain events here were happening. But they didn't have the privilege of getting into this book because they had no attachment to the will of God. Everything that found its way in this book got there because there was a connection between that event and the will of God. So you would notice that the Bible will talk about an entire book as though only one man existed because that was the only person who played a role that was in sync with God's program. Many other things were happening. So if our children would write about these days, they will not write about someone selling food outside necessarily. They will say, and there was a conference. And so, so, so men of God were ministering. And you would think that that's all that was happening in Lagos. Yet there is a lot happening. I was coming down from the lift and we, we made a mistake and I just stepped into a wedding. I just turned and I said, no, 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 this is not... This is not for me this night. I'm not invited. I refuse to be invited. I have a program. So there's someone is happy now. He just got a wife today. And if you are to record the move of God in 2019 in Lagos, you'll be surprised that God is only interested in how that wedding will produce his agenda. If he cannot find a place in that wedding, it is not worthy of capture into his program. Everything you see in the Bible, it is with respect to how it plays a role. That means ministry. If you're a man of God here, let me define ministry for you. Ministry is whatever comes out of you in honor and in support of God's program. Your pregnancy can become ministry if that child will be a prophet to the nations. So your assignment and your ministry can be to give birth. What was Mary's assignment? Your assignment can be to make money. Now, but this time around, it will not just be maybe, you know, you are just trying to... No, 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 no. You have found a place that you are in the similitude of Joseph of Arimathea and that your wealth has a role to play. The body of the son of the living God was hanging on the cross. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth and influence called Joseph of Arimathea to bring that body down. So God can make you a Joseph of Arimathea. That means if you sit down and you are just reading books and you are not making money, you are defaulting against your destiny with respect to your assignment. And if you make money and you make it small, you are still defaulting. Because the nature of your assignment has a threshold. Remember, this is not, for you it's not luxury. It's a ministry. So you are not at liberty to say, I'm, I have enough. No. Until the one who sent you said, this is enough. The same way a man of God cannot say, I know so much, I won't grow. It's a ministry. In ministry, when you move, only God says, stop. 
when it does not say stop, you don't stop even when there are mountains. His voice is the regulator of the journey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So tonight, I want us to just delve a little into revival. One of the, one of the ways that I've adopted as I teach believers is to be able to show you the applicability of a revelation. I believe that the edge in getting truth is to know how to apply it in your life. The mere exegesis of the information, as exciting as it can be, does not leave you at an advantage. There must be the point of application. Are we together now? Yes. So as I teach, I have in mind that the mysteries of the kingdom are useless if they just come as information. The applicability of those truths must be given to you. That's where your edge is in that knowledge. So I'm not, only, I'm not only concerned or excited about the unveiling of mysteries. We need to be able to connect those mysteries to the context of our civilization and how you can walk out tonight holding that truth. If we don't achieve that, we may clap for ourselves for getting so deep, but the truth is that we're not going to have any results. It's very painful how powerful meetings end without transformation. It's very painful how in one or two weeks, many people forget. It doesn't matter how they cry during the meeting. Think of how many meetings you've been in your life. Think of the last one that you believe that no other meeting can be greater than that. And you've even forgotten who he preached, not even to talk of what was said. There is a psychology in mentorship. It's not only spirituality. You have to understand man, not just as a spirit. You must understand the psychological component and how men receive truth. Are we together? Yes. It is part of the requirements to be an effective minister. A minister is first a communicator. It is the information he communicates that makes him superior. That means that while you, you lean on the strength of the Holy Spirit and the strength of the quality of your information, you must be fair enough to your listeners to go so far to understand how humans learn. Are we together? These are some of the auxiliary systems that help men of God to be very effective so that we don't waste our time dispensing truths that are not translated with a level of mastery that can cause the hearers to hear. The name of what I just defined for you is what the Bible calls utterance. There is a difference between utterance and oratory. Oratory is the ability to communicate words intelligently, grammatically, linguistically. But utterance, or oratory now, utterance is the ability to translate spiritual truth. Are we together? And minister it in a way and manner that regardless of the spiritual level and regardless of the intellectual level, there is a system of getting that truth into you. Is a grace. It's called utterance. Hallelujah. Ordinances of revival. That's my topic tonight. Ordinances of revival. Hmm. Tonight's teaching will truly set you on fire. And it will help us to not only be spiritual but to ensure that our territories, you see, kingdom advance is territorial. You are not free if you are the only one who is changed. The value system of the kingdom must translate from you and be reflected within your territory. So even our assignment is territorial. Are we together now? We have to graduate from the realm of individual transformation as good as it is. The systems and the structures will never come to the obedience of Christ when the transformation remains within us. There has to be a system of extending it. This is where I think there is a lot of problem when we teach on revival, the move of God. We isolate the environment, the cosmos, and act as though it should not be involved in the process. 
is a waste of time when your territory does not subscribe to your values. Praise the Lord. Ordinances of revival. Hmm. I can see with the eyes of the Spirit and I hear the sound of an army rising and I know they're rising in their thousands they're coming from afar they're coming from afar. Hey, 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 hey. Tonight is a kingdom anthem like we have a national anthem young ancients young ancients arise young ancients young ancients move forward young ancients the spirit of the Lord's with you. The power of Yeshua goes with you wherever you go. Oh, 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 Tonight I'm ministering, please sit down, in the spirit of Elijah. Elijah is not a man. Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns the move of God. The first manifestation of Elijah was in Noah. Praise the Lord. It is an ordinance that before the Lord comes, Elijah must forerun him. There was a personality who carried that office called Elijah. But Elijah is not a man. Just like Jezebel is not a man. There are systems. It's only that systems enter time by entering men. So all that you see in the Bible is a continuation of the same story using different actors through different dispensations. Every time you see the move of God about to come, watch out for Elijah. Elijah is a manifestation of the prophetic and the apostolic. And the assignment of Elijah is to bring back the ordinances of God. Are we together now? When the ordinances of God are put in place, then the Lord can come. So when it was time for the prophets of Baal to be judged, Elijah the Tishbite shows up. Are we together now? And then Malachi tells us before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. It's an ordinance. Are we together now? Yes. So when Jesus was about to come, Elijah comes again in the person we call John the Baptist. Did the Bible not say he came in the spirit and power of Elijah? John the Baptist came to forerun him because it is an ordinance. Please just follow me tonight. The same way, listen very carefully. When Jesus came, 
and Elijah came, Jezebel had to find a way to also be represented. And she was represented in a small lady who married a king. And the same way she vowed to remove the head of Elijah, she removed the head of John. Like she promised. Hallelujah. So what you see on earth are not just bodies. They are continuation of a story. Are we together? Please write this down. An ordinance is a precept. An ordinance is an accredited methodology. An ordinance is a precept. An ordinance is is an accredited methodology. An ordinance is an, is an authorized approach. So when we say the ordinances of revival, we are talking about the systems that have been allocated by which individuals, families, and territories can activate and preserve the move of God within the lifetime of a dispensation. You have to know this. If this is not discussed, we failed in this conference. You have to talk about the subject of revival. Here and there, we've read books about the moves of God. Like, let, me, let me talk for five minutes about the move of God. There are two dimensions of the move of God. We're discussing revival tonight. Are we still together? The first dimension of the move of God is called the cyclical move of God. From the word circle, the cyclical move of God. That means these moves have similarity. There is a repeatability in their operation. Are we together now? It is these kinds of moves that you will need a father figure for because you can take the advantage of history and age plays a lot here. The cyclical move of God. Moving again as he did before. So when you meet a man that has done business with God for many years, he can read the writings on the wall and tell you, I know this move. When I was 17 years, this was how the formation of the revival started. And now I see that same formation. So he can guide you. An example of such a move and such an advantage was Eli and Samuel. Although the eyes of Eli was becoming dim, which is a dangerous state spiritually, but he still had an advantage of the understanding this move. The moment he saw a young boy coming and said, sir, you called me. It's amazing that God used the voice of Eli to call Samuel. He didn't say, I had the voice of him. Mm -mm, I came to you. It was the sound of your voice God used. And when he came the second time, Eli said, ah, this is familiar. I know this. The next time he calls, say, speak, Lord. Because until you respond, he cannot continue. I, he will not violate your will. Remember that God lures men. Oh, dear. Help me, Holy Spirit. I don't want to delve and talk about so many things now. The way God lures men into dimensions, you see, is to come to you. He knows your spiritual hunger and appetite. So he will manifest something about him that reflects your hunger and hide it back. The moment that happens, it will draw you to want to find out. So as a man of God, you are trusting God for a prophetic grace, for instance. Now, you will come for a meeting and it's like it will be hazy. You'll be hearing Janet and say, ah, should I embarrass myself or not? Who is Janet? I'm the one. Are you five in your... We are five. You see, you are happy. And then the next meeting, you will try it again. And it will not work. It is not backsliding. He's luring you. <laughs> Dimensions in the spirit cannot only be believed. They can be tasted. Oh, taste and see. I've always used this example. Let me use it again. I come from the north. And I, many of you have them here, right? That these people that sell meat. Yes. They never allow you buy it. 
they allow you to taste it first. Because they know that the awareness of what is in your pocket will, 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 will shortchange their desire to extract more money from you. They know how to manipulate what is in your pocket. So they'll say, don't worry, there's no pressure. You can even go if you want to. They will dare you. And so you plan to spend 1,000 naira and your wife is standing there with you. And then they just, you taste one, ah, what of this one? This one is like it has too much fat. Say, they will bring out another one and say, there's this one doesn't have fat. You end up spending 5,000 naira there unplanned for. When God is about to call Moses, Moses sees a bush burning but not consumed. And the, the bush continued there. It was God luring him. He said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. The moment he turned aside, he said, finally, I've got it. That's all. The morale for all this was to get your attention. Let me tell you this. It is hard to get man's attention. The distraction that is upon mankind cannot allow us to focus on God and understand. God is very excited when he finally gets man's attention. He doesn't hide it. You see his excitement. That's why when God is trying to use a man and you come to distract that man, God will say, you don't know what I went through to get this guy to now pay attention. You better not be a distraction. There are many skills that the Spirit of God can employ to get men's attention. He can relocate men. He can go as far as making you lose your job. And it doesn't matter in this economy because restoration is still possible. So it's only you that knows you are at a loss. In the economy of God, it doesn't make any difference. Because six months later, you can be back to what you would have been. So you are the only one who is feeling it as a loss. But I mean, the realm of the spirit is looking at you and saying, what is this guy saying? So God can be at liberty and comfortable to let you lose your job. Because you think that if that job does not come, the salary of five months and God is saying, look, there are weightier matters. This is not the issue of the job. It's the reason why when you are scared and pray some prayers, God just overlooks it and says, let's deal with the major issues. There is already a provision to tell you sorry later. Hallelujah. You really have to pray for me this night because I can't even remember how I got to where. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have the cyclical move of God. Are we together now? Yes. If a campus now, campus presidents here, you can come and meet Pastor Dele and say, we are seeing a formation in our campus. Something is beginning to happen. People are just shouting under the anointing in the hostel. And on the strength of the experience of having passed through that move, everybody who was involved in any campus move of God will smile and say, we know these writings. We know what it means. A young guy will just come and tell you, as soon as I finish lecture, something keeps driving me to the bush. You laugh. You say, I can interpret it. That one is easy. Mene, mene, tekel, first. No, that one, I've been trained. It's not word of knowledge. An experience. There is something about the bush and God building people. The bush doesn't have to burn. You just go there. Because it can get your attention. Are we together now? So you can advise the people. Now, but listen. But there are certain moves of God. The second dimension of the move of God. It is not cyclical. No one has seen it. These are moves that are prophetic. For instance, the coming revival that is coming that we are prophesying is in the similitude of this move. There is no man that can give a clue about it. The character of the revival left even our fathers with thoughts. They said we stretch our eyes. We don't know. We just know that something will happen. You have to trust God real time. The only spirit of God or the only spirit that can help and guide men is the Holy Spirit. 
That's the kind of move where both the young and old will have to stand helpless. Waiting for God to define the terms of that move. So it says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Then it begins to describe the formation of this army. Not every move of God can be predicted. It will not be like before. This is where the limitation of knowing the God of yesterday comes. Because the last move of God always fights the next move of God. Just because God is doing something now, the way he, or the way, just because God is not doing something now, the way he did it 10 years ago, does not mean he's not the one doing it. This is the trouble with boxing God to a cyclical move alone. When you study God's generals, many of you have studied God's generals, right? There was this man, let me, let me, since we're discussing revival, let's honor, we have to, it's like a manual. This is a textbook on revival. You are not a serious student of revival if you don't know the book or have not read the book or don't have it. You have to ask God and those men for forgiveness because they are still alive. The labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. So you have to at least honor them. Are we together now? So, there was a man called Alexander Towe. Now, those days, you didn't have internet and you didn't have phones. So if I were in Zaria here, I would not know that God was moving in Lagos. So it would be safe to assume I'm the only one who is capturing these dimensions of God. Are you, are you getting the problem now? Alexander Doway was a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. People say they are evangelists. He was not an evangelist. Praise the Lord. He became the spiritual mayor of Illinois. It was him that built Zion City as an attempt to conquer the cosmos. He didn't get the blueprint properly. But at least it was an attempt. He was the first person to start what we now do, our fathers do, like campgrounds and to have a place like this. It was Alexander the Way. Are we together now? Where you have a territory that is secluded with hospitals and this that reflects the value system of heaven. The Way was so powerful that he mentored the mayors and he mentored all of these people. He came to a time where every time people read the Bible, the man they saw was the way. And they said, Alexander, the way you are Elijah. For a while he said, no, 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 how can I be Elijah? But one day, he thought about it and said, ah, it may be true that I'm Elijah. And by the next week, the way was in a priestly regalia. Are we together now? Now, that's not even where I'm going to. Later on, when his ministry was about coming to an end, people came from another region and rumored a strange move that had started. This is what I want to communicate to you. And they said that move was headed by a woman huh, called Maria Woodward Eater. Now, listen very carefully. That this woman... Number one, that she was a woman. Two, she was uneducated. Number three, she did not. I mean, this guy said, because the, the nature of his teaching captured God and said, I am the reference of anything God. It's a dangerous lesson. So Alexander the way started hearing and tried to find out more. What was the nature of this move? It was Maria Woodward Eater that introduced something that we call presence evangelism. That means that people are slain under the power, but not like it happens to us now. It was a strange phenomenon because they would not only fall, they would freeze as though dead in that position for many hours. I remember those days when God started with us on campus. It was like that. People would just lie down as though dead for hours. And you who is the prayer warrior that initiated that trouble, you keep praying that they wake up. Because if for any reason, they don't wake up. While it is true you are anointed, you have a situation you must manage intelligently. 
You are building that person, but they have parents. <laughs> are we together? Now watch this. When Alexander Doe heard what God was doing with Maria Woodward Ita, he was not even patient to study it. He compared the move with his experience. And when he saw that there was a significant difference, he said, number one, this woman was of the devil. Her operation was of the devil. And he used his credibility to try to discourage her. So here and there, people who came from Doe's meetings, to her meetings. They were not there to receive. They were there to cause a lot of trouble. And they manipulate people including the first husband Woodward. Who made life very difficult for her. It was while Woodward frustrated her to a point that while she will be preaching, he will be having an affair with one lady. Eventually Woodward died and she was the one who conducted his funeral. Then a few years later she married the man they call Ita who now was her second husband, who was a great support and helped her. Are we together now? Yes. So we see that a man was fighting the move of God. And when you study down through history, what we call denominations, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, talking against any denomination, but almost every denomination, mainstream denomination, was a persecuted version of the previous denomination. You have to be students of history if you want to study the move of God. Now, a generation is full of very proud people who just believe they are in ministry, they are in this, and they would not sit down to learn. The persecuted version of different ministries is what kept bringing forth certain ministries. And the factor responsible for the persecution was an introduction to a new dimension of God. Every time a new dimension of God was introduced that was not captured in the prior move, they fought it. Please, you have to understand this because this revival we are shouting about is going to come with side effects. And you must be trained to understand the side effects. It will not be the way it has been. Many people will call what is of God the devils because it does not conform to the mold of religion. Because it does not conform to the mold of certain things. Once upon a time, if someone fell under the anointing, you call a doctor. You don't say, oh, praise Jesus, he's growing. No. It took time. And those who pioneered that dimension suffered a great deal. They were persecuted. They turned them into all kinds of things. The move of God on campus today is now received but those who God started using they suffered though. They were blackmailed. They were told to be destroying people, destroying students, not helping people study. Look, let me, there is a price to host the move of God. There is a level of stamina you must sustain to host God. The weight of God is very heavy. You have to be strong to be able to carry him. Are we together now? So I want to be able to share with us a few keys from scripture and from my experience as a student of revival. I submit to you by the spirit of the living God that God has helped me to study revival and I've had the privilege to meet a few people who met the generals and to converse with them. What did they tell you? I've spent my life like a spiritual archaeologist because I found out it's part of the responsibility of the apostolic ministry. You have to know what God did before. It's not a name and it's not a title. It's a burden and a responsibility. You must be able to educate a generation. And say this is how we know God to be. But now let's watch. Even me I'm not sure but at least I can guide you. Because his move is coming. In 2005 I had a vision pastor. In that vision, I started seeing the move of God that was going to come to China. I was in a vision of the Lord and then I saw young Chinese children. Listen very carefully. I saw young Chinese children and it was like fire just came on one. And then the fire moved to one. Then it moved to one. 
then it woofed one and then it became an inferno that could not be quenched. And the spirit of the Lord told me he was taking the move of God to China. Then the spirit of the Lord began to teach me about the move of God that was in Europe. Please listen very carefully. Europe is really supposed to be the center of Christianity. There is a spiritual heritage that is domiciled within that land that was corrupted by secularism. Till today you go to Europe, you will see it. You are a Christian, it's as if you are holding typewriter. Are we together now? The system was designed to make you feel foolish for knowing and loving God. And God has a way he preserves a move. When he finds out that that move is shrinking, he will transport that move to a region and hide it for safety. Watch this. The move of God is like Olympic fire. It must not die. Are we together now? So when he finds out that there are careless people who are left around that move, he will find a way of shifting that move to a zone of safety. Awaiting a time when he will find a ready people. Please understand what I'm telling you. These are deep discussions on revival. We're only joking if we don't know these truths. Hmm. Hallelujah. Then the move of God went to America, pastor. And the way it was very powerful because it was an environment that was conducive for God. The founding fathers already made the environment. That means that the founding fathers territorially allowed the purposes of God to be established. Are we together now? Territorially, they represented the people there. And they said, Maranatha, God, we allow you to come. So the Spirit of God on legal grounds could come and establish a lot of things. Then came all these moves. Now, let me tell you where the problem was. The move of God that happened in the 40s, the 50s, and even the early 60s, it was corrupted because those who carried that fire did not have a system of balance. So Satan invented a formula that he used when Moses was negotiating the exodus of Egypt. Leave your wives and your children behind. So the evangelists were in the field preaching and they never had the time to raise another generation. And Satan saw that I can't, this man already loves God. Backsliding is not, it won't happen. So he said, I leave you. I will come and grow with your child. John G. Lake who was an evangelist in Spokane. And then he was also in South Africa for many years. When John G. Lake's wife was about to die, he was in the field and his daughter made a comment, sir. He said, if daddy were here, mommy would not die. The idea they had about kingdom advance was the fact that even if my family dies, let it die. I want to show you the sacrifice that brought us to where we are today. They are not bad people. They were limited by the light that was available then. Praise the Lord. They asked Billy Graham's wife. They said, the way this man would not be with you, sometimes he could be with his wife seven times in a year. How many times? Ladies, attention, seven times in a year. Mark that man, score him over 100. So they asked her, how did you endure? Listen, how did you survive? She said there were times she felt like dying. But she would not divorce him. That was a price. Now watch this. When, when all these things started happening, Satan knew that these fathers, he knew that there was one thing common to men, time. The limitation of time. One day these guys will die and they will join the cloud of witnesses. So he said, instead of us trying to convince them to backslide, that's too much energy. Let's go back to their children and grow with them. And they began to manipulate a philosophy and an ideology, a value system that made it unattractive to be a serious Christian. Those children of yesterday are those who sit in government today. You transform a generation by growing with them. Not interrupting them when they are growing. 
Listen, as anointed as God has helped me to be, if I go to redemption camp right now and I meet all our fathers and our mothers, even if I remove a head and put it back, they will be impressed and say, wow, you are very anointed. I'm on my way to go and listen to Papa Deboe, please. I will talk to you later on. I said, come, I have a Greek and he says, do you know why? Because Papa Ia Deboye was the face of God that grew with that generation. And David served his generation. It's not enough to serve God. You must serve God within the context of a generation. You must know the age range your grace was allocated to. Otherwise, you are in for a big shock. Any man of God who cannot define the age range of your impact, you have lost a generation already. And you must pay the laborious price of growing with that generation. You will not show up when they are on the throne and say, I, I'm a man of God. You have no place in their life. Your impact must be enshrined as you grow with them. So I tell you the mistake most of us are making right now. Let's just correct it. You are ashamed of being a minister over young people because they are financially incapable. And you want to gather people who are 60 years plus, who will be dying in the next 10 to 20 years. While the generation is searching for the face, I told you God uses men to personify moves. What is your face representing to a generation? Today in the generation of our fathers, when you talk of deliverance and the rest, the face of Dr. Olukoya, when you talk about all of these men, they must have replacements because they will not be there forever. And right now, the formation of the next move has started. But ignorant and hungry people are ignoring the next move to try to manage the last move. Please sit down. When we started those days, people looked at us and said, oh, all these guys are just young boys with fellowship. You see, that's the problem. The fellowship people are now the CEOs you are talking about, sir. And let me tell you something with a generation. A generation, men and Africans are loyal to the face that raised them. They will never fall. If you were not there when they were suffering and drinking Gary, don't you think you will show up one day and just say, I'm starting a ministry. They look at you and say, where is the history? Impact is historical. Where is, bring the archive. Show me where you played a role in helping this generation transit. It's a gift to be planted in the future now. But only those with the eyes of the spirit will need to see. Hmm. I love my parents. They listen to my messages. I'm very sure they just listen for the purpose of loyalty and solidarity to a spiritual son. I mean, how many mysteries am I going to teach my father now? Where is he going to start from? Mystery of what? Is it, is it to a dance? Where, where, I mean, what, what is he going to start from? The dance that will later cause him to collapse and bring more trouble for me. Is it not better that he just stays the way he is? Let me keep taking care of him as he counts his days with honor. Now, let me teach you something. Look up, please. Look up. I'm saying many things tonight, but I'm, I'll soon start showing us the precept. But I want to show you something. Listen. Do you know that a man who answers the call of God at age 50 or 60 God is going to route a system of jumping many things in his training and remedy them so when that man is teaching and mentoring younger people he will ignore certain things it was ignored in his life as an advantage to help his age but a young man should not jump what he's jumping you can't teach a man of 75 years avoid fornication his age has already helped him avoid fornication. Are we together now? <laughs> or thou shalt not steal. I mean, where is the energy when it takes him a long time to even hold the mic and start talking? It takes energy to do all these things. And now that guy does not have that strength again. 
But when a young gentleman watches that man and also decides to jump like that, then he's going to have a very serious problem. It is true that a revival is coming. One more vision and then we'll teach. The Lord opened my eyes a few years ago and the Lord began to show me the move of God that would come in Nigeria and in Africa. And then because the move of God will always assume the formation of king, priest and prophet. It's an order and an ordinance. They are the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. There must be within a territory a king, a priest, a prophet. And this time around, the king, priest, prophet formation is not individuals, but territories. Please follow me. And in allocating these graces, this is how the graces went. The prophetic grace went to Ghana. Listen. Listen carefully. The king dimension huh, went to Nigeria. The priest dimension went to South Africa. Watch this. These three regions, by the counsel of God, he hid this dimension like an Olympic fire in them. Now watch this. When Satan knew and saw this, he started bringing a lot of corruption. Now please, if those following from any nation, I love you, I love Africa, I love the whole world. I'm a child of God. Are we together? So I don't teach to communicate any bias. Ghana! started corrupting the prophetic with religion and divination. That's why an average Ghanaian, he, he don't, he's, this guy is a thief and yet he's seen. Are we together now? Yes. He can look at you and say, I'm not born again, oh, but be careful. I'm hearing a sound like a car is hitting you. And you will think it's a joke until you see a tricycle that almost wants to capsize you and you remember and say, who is that guy? He's not a prophet. He's not even aware. He's a heritage that is territorial. Like mineral resources planted in a region. There are spiritual resources too. When you are domiciled within that region, you can tap into that advantage. I will soon show you the one God put in this country. Because there are. Are we together now? So there was a corruption. South Africa, because of what happened with Mandela and the over-liberalization, you see, priesthood requires discipline. Are we together now? The emblem, the signature of a priest is the discipline of compliance to the terms of priesthood. So the liberalization of everything brought them to a point of laziness, respectfully speaking, both spiritual and physical. You still see it today. I was in, a, in South Africa and I was rushing to go and enter a mall and a car was coming. And in Nigeria, cars don't stop for you. I stopped for the car and the man was honing me and said, pass. And then I stood and he refused to move. And then he said, pass. I, I moved. I said, wow. <laughs> Nigeria, my fatherland. <laughs> oh no. There's, there's no time for that kind of thing. <laughs> now watch this. The danger there is that when people begin to go down in their prayer life, everything eventually reflects their prayer life by going down to. Are we together now? And then corruption, sangomas began to arise, right? With all kinds of replacements. And then the spirit of the Lord. Now I'm sharing these things as experiences. Are we together? I'm not making doctrines out of them, but these are experiences that I'm sharing with you. And I believe that the Spirit of God will bear witness with your spirit. One thing happened, sir. Watch this. It happened just at the time Boko Haram was about to start. That's why I tell you to listen. What I'm teaching is prophetic. Because of the corruption that was happening in this move. Remember that Africa is God's firstborn. Every continent, major continent, in the similitude of the sons of Noah, has been given an opportunity to host God. And Africa is that rejected stone that must be given a chance. And unfortunately, prophecies upon Africa, as that continent that will lift up the banner of righteousness, Africa is the rejected stone that will host Christ. 
Are we together? And in Africa, by the privilege of God's grace, Nigeria is that firstborn. Listen carefully. What we are sharing tonight is very prophetic. And I want you to listen. Because of this corruption, sir, the Spirit of God decided to capture both the king, priest, prophet, bring all of them to Nigeria and hide them. I can tell you with all authority, standing in the office of an apostle, that these graces are hiding in this country. Now watch this. But those who carry these graces are not yet on TV. You don't know them. They don't even know they are the ones carrying it. It was disguised as to not corrupt their training. Please watch this. Because God stores his possibilities in men. You will soon know that some of those men are the ones looking at me now. Please listen very carefully. When that happened, God divided Nigeria prophetically into two. Are we together now? Mission fields and training camps divided Nigeria. The south, the east became mission fields and the north became training camps. Are we together now? Why? Because the hostility of darkness was a system of advantage that will not allow you to veer off too much. One bomb is bombing there and it will bring you back. So it's easy. The apparatus to train you spiritually is already there. It's the reason why when God wants to really use you, he will find a way of helping your feet to touch the north and you return back. Even if it's a, a weak visit, it's not, it's not about the north. It's about a heritage. You just thought you came for a meeting. It's more than that. Where did Bishop Oyedepo start? Where did many of these... Is, is, sit down, sit down. Now watch this. Watch this. It was because of this thing that manifestations like Boko Haram started. It's more than a political thing. Because every time saviors are about to come out of Zion, the Mount of Esau already has giants there. Are we together now? Yes, so God is hiding these graces and these mantles in men. And God concealed the awareness of it from them so that it will not corrupt the pace of their training. So you quietly went to bed one night and started seeing crusades. Watch this now. You started seeing the sick get healed. And you just got up and said, ah, like Mary, what manner of vision is this? And you kept it to yourself. Are we together now? And you applied and applied and applied for NYC in Lagos. Your uncle assured you. He said, no, don't worry. Lo and behold, when your NYC came out, they sent you to Sokoto. And you went to God and said, Lord, what is this? And he didn't answer you. That your feet will touch and receive something. Because there are five elements by which the supernatural is communicated. Five elements. Number one is fire. Number two is water. Number three is the earth. Number four is wind. Are we together now? And number five is light. Every manifestation of the supernatural must subscribe to these elements to find expression in our world. Now, let me tell you something that will bless you. Looks like a little digression, but do you know that the same way there are mineral resources, sir, there are spiritual resources in this Nigeria too. I will tell you, there is an allocation of grace and possibilities. To the Yoruba nation, 
There are two great mantles that was given to the Yoruba. The grace for enlightenment, light, light, which reflects as intellectual prowess and the prophetic. The Yoruba nation is a heritage. You don't have to be born again. It's a heritage. So the average Yoruba person is extremely intelligent. You may not even know where this came from. And the average Yoruba person will easily step into the prophetic. You look at our fathers, the apostolic church, CAC, all of these men. Are we together now? Almost every Yoruba man of God with 50 years and above has a prophetic inclination. They may not call names, but they create possibilities. It's a heritage. The East connecting to the South-South. Are we together now? That grace, the spirit of Bezalel, the creativity of God and favor, these two graces were given to them. It's a heritage. An evil man can go to Iraq and head a company. It's not because he likes money. There is a grace. The North was given the seat of governance. It's a grace. That's why our people study these things. That's why they believe it is their right to rule forever. They are not talking out of nonsense. There are spiritual archives and divination shows there is proof. The average Muslim, talk with him. He's not thinking business. He's thinking governance, politics, history. They don't even know what moves them to have that interest. If God wants to announce you in Nigeria, your feet must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abeokuta and Lagos, you will never go global from Nigeria. It's a mystery. So no matter where you are, when your season of appearance comes, God will orchestrate an event that must cause your feet to touch this place. Go and find out your secular musicians. Go and find out all these people. Trace their lifting. Because Abel Kuta is the mother of Lagos. Lagos is a child that was born by a woman called Abel Kuta. It's a spiritual heritage. Now, I, I, I want to be sincere with you. There's no sentiments. I don't know where you come from. I've not mentioned where I come from too in all these things. So we are together. But I'm telling the truth is still the truth. So you can see why it was easy for me to step into an apostolic office. Much more than a call, there was a territorial advantage that already inclined you to governance. It takes the eyes of the spirit to see these things. Revelation is not something you look for. You are initiated into it like occult. It's a body of truth. You are called to be a partaker, a fellowship with a mystery. And if it does not come to you, you cannot see it. The looking for revelation is a waste. You only align yourself for the spirit of God to bring that truth to you. This is where we are in prophecy. The move of God is starting in a very strange way. And let me tell you, the character of that move is that it will no longer be a move that is just mainstream evangelism. Like walking on the street and just handing someone a placard and saying, what is your name? No, 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 it will not happen that way. That's why if you, de if you depend just on cyclical advice, you are going to miss something serious. The character of that move will, God will use every arsenal, creativity, dominion, everything will play a role. Other moves did not stress these things. They emphasized things like prayer. They emphasized things like the study of the word and all of those things. But the character of this move is not just something that will be spiritual in context. The move is spiritual, but it will have a body reflected in science reflected in lifting reflected in financial prosperity reflected in governance our assignment tonight as a people in prophecy 
is to know how to host and preserve. If I can do this within the few minutes I have, I will just touch one or two. Our time is already gone. I didn't even realize the time has gone. One or two, and then we'll continue tomorrow. Are we together? Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests. Now please look up. I feel so embarrassed, but you won't believe it's now my meet. My this truly is now. I'm looking at my notes to start the sermon, but yes, in in all fairness, see how this thing works sometimes. Praise the Lord. No problem. O, 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 whatever we are. Now, there are many. There are many systems of identifying believers in the Bible. Two main ways of identifying of classifying believers this is, is really now our lecture starts number one is classification by identification so believers are classified by their identification and there are names that are given to us for instance believers are called sons of God are we together believers are called joint heirs with Christ Believers are called the righteousness of God. Are we together? These are classifications with respect to our identification. There are many names we are called based on our identification. As many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. But there is our classification by function and destiny. Are we together now? So the Bible classifies us by function and destiny. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. There are seven of them. Light, salt, kings, priests, ambassadors, royal priesthood, and so on and so forth like that. I think there's, there are about seven of them. Classifications by function and destiny. When you are mentoring believers and you are helping them to have a stable spiritual foundation, your emphasis is revealing their classification by their identity. Are we together? Because you connect them now to the Christ. And you know that the, the pivot of the believer's experience in the kingdom is the Christ. Are we together now? Your journey starts with the Christ. It is from the Christ, Jesus, now that you now begin to move to the various areas of the kingdom life. So when it has to do with revivals and the move of God and the agenda of God and the program of God, our concentration must be to study our classification with respect to our functions and destiny. And it's one of it I want to talk about now. So Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says, you are not just sons. You are not just the righteousness of God. You are not just all of these things. You are also kings and you are priests. You are light and you are salt. Are we together now? Acts chapter 1 Verse 8 also calls us according to function. It calls us witnesses. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. So these are classifications by function and by destiny. Are we together now? Now the gospel of salvation. Please listen. There are different gospels in the Bible. Seven of them generally. But the gospel of salvation is that which is needed to bring believers into the new birth experience. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the love of the Father. Are we together now? Captured and reflected in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ and man's response to that act of love. The, the, the message of the gospel of salvation is love. 
For God so loved. That was the motivation. So everything you see in salvation, you have to make reference to that statement. For God so loved. In the gospel of salvation, man does not do anything. Your only assignment is to understand the benevolence and the love of the Father as reflected in Jesus. His death, his, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his exaltation. You don't just stop in his resurrection. Ascension and exaltation. That's, that's the progression. He starts and then he's seated. You, he didn't just resurrect. He resurrected, went to the heavens and sat down. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand. Are we together? When you believe that gospel, you receive what the Bible calls zoe. We call it eternal life. But you've heard my teachings. It's not exactly a very clear, it's not an accurate rendition because everybody has eternal life. The condition for eternal life is not believing in Jesus. The condition of eternal life is passing through the womb of a woman. Once you pass through the womb of a woman, you have eternal life. Now, don't go around harassing any pastor. This is a believer's meeting. So when you see someone, are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you don't misunderstand me. Eternal life just means life without end. What happens to us at death is a change of dimensions, not cessation of living. The rich fool and Lazarus, sin one, they are on earth. Sin two, they are both alive. They can communicate. When you evangelize, you don't say, will you spend eternity? The question is location, not the possibility. So, once you pass through the womb of a woman, you have life without end. So the life God gave us is not an addition to that life. It's a quality of life that they call Zoe. Not God's kind of life. Our great fathers like Kenneth Hagin called it God's kind of life. You know that if you were alive, you would have still edited it because revelation is progressive. It's not the kind. It is the life of God. The kind means there are other types. The life of plants is still the life of God. Is the God kind of life. Because life, all life comes from God. The life of plants, the life of lower animals is still God's kind of life. Are we together? But this is the life of God that he gave us. Write this down. Our mandate as a generation is to host and preserve the ordinances of God across families and across our territories. Our mandate as a generation is to be able to host and preserve the ordinances of God. As far as the move of God is concerned, as far as the program of God is concerned, this is a generational assignment that we have to work together in synergy to know that there is a mandate upon us as a generation to make sure that we are able to host the ordinances and to preserve them. The song says, show us the ancient paths. It says, lead us along eternal highway. We want to walk the footsteps, the ways of Jesus. And I want to show you very quickly, number one, the first ordinance of revival, the first methodology, the first approach, the first way to both activate and to preserve a move of God within a life and within a territory is the ministry of prayer, intercession, and supplication. Please write it down. The first way God, his purposes, his move will be preserved in Lagos, will be preserved in any city is through the ministry of prayer. Prayer is a very interesting subject because the Bible makes us understand that there are vials in heaven. Are we together now? There are vials in heaven where the prayers of the saints are collected and stored. That means the prayers continue to speak to God even when you have stopped praying. Are we together now? This is very powerful. 
any generation that the devil wants to alienate them from the move of God, the root of the attack will start from the prayer life. Look at America. What happened? Take prayer out of schools. It's a strategy. It's subtle. But that's the strategy. He spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men, if you are not a man, no problem. But once you are a man, it didn't say men in trouble. He spake a parable to the end that men always ought to pray and not faint. And now it's interesting the story. I don't want to run there because of our time. The Bible uses a man. He's showing you the power of prayer in manipulating a climate and a person to reflect God. So he borrows two people, a weak woman and a very unjust and wicked judge and combines them together. That the edge of that woman is her importunity, the ability to weary that judge with her consistency. So when the saints continue to lift up the incense of prayer, if you study history, you will study lands that prayed for 100 years, 50 years, let the move of God come. And then all of a sudden, someone was reading a newspaper one day and fell down and broke his chair because he saw an angel. And the angel did not come because of him. He came because an invitation had been sent many times from the earth to heaven. From the earth to heaven. The incense of prayer. Ask anybody who has seen any dimension of the move of God. The character of that move is prayer. Usually men begin to pray. They don't know why. They are driven by a force that is higher than their own definition. They just pray. Pray sometimes amiss. But they pray. So you start praying and pray like a fool. One day someone is strolling and he comes and says, can I join you? And they join you. And after a few times, let me tell you, when the move of God is starting, you know the move will grow to the degree to which women come. Because you see, listen, let me teach you this. A woman is a gate in the spirit. It's a mystery. Any church you are starting and you don't see women come, just know you are in trouble. It's true. Women are signposts. Who was the first person to see the resurrected Christ? A woman is a gate in the spirit. Listen. The womb that was given to a woman is not about a child. I hope you know a man and a woman are two dimensions of God. He just separated himself to use marriage and explain something. And then to double as a system of procreation. But the primary assignment was not children. There was something about him that cannot be known till he separates his dimension into two entities. Then join them back and says they are one. They can be one because they were always one. That means your marriage, if the assignment of your marriage is complete, we should not have children alone. We should also have a salmon. There should be something about the revelation of the Christ. So a woman and a man are two dimensions of God. If you don't agree, you added something to that description. Because if it's ideal, it should connect. I ask you to pray for me. You refuse to intercede for me and I've been delving into so many things now. Everybody say prayer. Now, on a serious note, we are going to pray. But many of us here, one of the reasons why God brought you to this conference is because you've been laughing about the issue of prayerlessness. You are down in your prayer life, yet you are still the highest prayer warrior in your family. That's to tell you how easy it is. Are we together? When the devil wants to destroy you, he will allow your prayer life go down. Then put you in the midst of prayerless people. So when you compare yourself with them, you will have a sense of advancement. And they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. The first miracle 
the first proof that God has come to you is that something begins to happen to your prayer life. The primary purpose of prayer, I've told you this was in the morning, is not just to receive things. This is a theology that must be corrected. There is a dimension of prayer that is made for reception. And there is a dimension of prayer for warfare. But the primary dimension of prayer or assignment of prayer is a system of transformation. When you pray, you are like a snake that is molting. You are coming out of your old self into a higher dimension of you. He prayed and his countenance. If prayer was just for receiving, why did Jesus pray? To receive what? Because he was the fullness of the Godhead manifested bodily. The completeness of God. Yet he still prayed. And he spake a parable to the end that everybody here ought to pray and not to faint. But the second reason we need to pray again, please look up, is because the second heavens has a strange manifestation of demonic powers. They don't attack men. They attack territories. The classification of the satanic kingdom as revealed by Apostle Paul in his lecture, he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, are we together? Rulers of this darkness. Then he says spiritual wickedness. They don't reign on earth. They reside in the heavenlies. So there is a domain where they reside. And their assignment is to become the mind control systems of a territory. Please listen to me. That means that they have studied that civilization over many years. And they have built the loopholes around that civilization so if they look at lagos they know what to do they know that lagos does not have time so when they want to attack you they will use that angle to come into your life when he wants to attack you he will cause your boss to be so interested in you that you will start sleeping in the office every day instead of going back home and by sleeping in the office you are there your secretary is there he didn't say fornicate. He just knows that when he does something to time, many other things will go wrong in your life. They are controlling powers. And the system of putting them at bay is the prayers of the saints. I know that we talk a lot about Daniel and praying 21 days, you know, and in the New Testament, this is not true. Listen to me. It's not entirely true. The reason why Daniel was delayed was not because he was in the Old Testament. No. No. You have to understand that the ministry of prayer predates Old or New Testament. These are dimensions and ordinances that have been there before our civilization of earth started. There are many things you must study that are consistent with God's character. They started before Adam. Our own dispensation is just a little over 6,000 years. So the program of God did not just start with us. When you study the archives of the wisdom of God, our dispensation is number something out of many that has gone before us and will come after us. We have this idea that we are the first. No, many things happened on earth before we arrived. For instance, there was a day where Satan was not even created. And God was alive. And a program was happening there. Do you know the story of that generation? It's in your Bible. Satan was created one day. Before he happened, what was God doing? That's why the Bible says, in the beginning, not from the beginning. God. There is a lot that happened. Then there is a day that the earth came as an idea of God. Job was telling us. And foundations were laid on earth. And the sons of God and the morning stars sang for joy. You were still not there. There was a program God was doing. Revelation ends with the beginning of another dispensation. We don't know whether we are number what. All we know is what is captured here. And that with the spirit of God will allow. Most of these details were what was captured in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are we together now? These were some of the revelations that were shown the man Enoch. 
These were the revelations that when these angels, the Nephilims, when they came to the earth, this was the information they kept giving the daughters of men that lured them to sleep with them and produce this aberrated species of men. He didn't just come and meet the women and say, I like you. No. They taught them wizardry. They taught them how to manipulate fire and water and the elements of creation and to manipulate the constellations. That was what led to the flood of Noah. A judgment of a race that had been corrupted. Are we together now? Remember the woman has her seed and Satan too has his seed. Satan is not alone. He has a seed. Now this teaching is very interesting. Go and read the Bible. That Satan has a seed. And they are on earth today. Not everybody on earth is human. <laughs> we are in the similitude of humans. But not everybody is human. Salvation is only for men. Not angels. Not powers. If you are not a man from Adam... You cannot be a partaker of redemption and salvation. That's why it was the elders that said, what is the lamb that was slain to receive unto them? You read in your Bible, us. It's an error in translation. The elders, the 24 elders, the creatures, they are not partakers of salvation. Let me stop here. I don't want to create any long argument. I just said the 24 elders and I could just feel because many of you have been told many things about the elders. Those elders are, when the Bible calls somebody old from eternity, you should not think your dispensation. Let me just leave it there. The ancient of days. And then the Bible, in the similitude of that order of age, he calls some people elders. You really believe there are 6,000 years? Is that enough to be an elder in heaven? Prayer. I will stop here tonight. But there are six of them. Please make sure that we are available to receive it because it is powerful. Now, I hope that you are not just excited and clapping for a man you think is saying something powerful because it's more than that. The morale is to let you know that your family, Lagos, Nigeria, is at a very prophetic, defining moment. And God is counting on men and women and putting programs like this. Are we together? Very prophetic, well-intentioned programs to be able to converge a people. There is a DNA of revival. That's why I told you yesterday, I said, oh, what's it today? I said, if you came here you did not come by invitation. It's a solemn assembly. Praise the Lord. These are the truths that are committed to us by the grace of God. It's a privilege of the election of grace to be able to supply these truths as a contribution to mature the body so that we go out of these old wise fables and all these things that continue to waste the time of Christians in the name of church to wean us out of this childishness that makes us to remain powerless. It's not an insult, but let me tell you, the move of God that is coming cannot be fought, not by the anger of any man of God and not by the gates of hell. It is a move that has come to stay. You choose to join it or you are blown by it. It's a move of fire. It's a move of grace. It's not a move that is just based on education. It's a move that is governed by hunger. It's a move that is governed by his predeterminate counsel. The spirit of the Lord himself becoming the Lord and the captain of that move. And everyone who knows God is beginning to see the formation of that army. From region to region. Every time I travel... I continue to see the formation. I look at men and I can know by the spirit. They are part of that move. It's like a brotherhood. A system. We know ourselves. 
So you travel to a land and you see someone and you can almost greet and hug the person as if you've known forever. It is because of the Elizabeth Mary reality. It's not two children that were in their womb. No. It was a discussion between eternity and time. All oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. All oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh, my altar is calling you. Ah. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. This is a song of men who want to be used by God. Let the fire from your altar. Let the fire from your Salabarandas Cabradis Galebaruski Adaba. Let the fire from your ah. And when you have no more words, this is what you say. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a cry of revival. Lagos, lift up your voice. The anthem of Nigeria says, Arise, O compatriots. There is also a call in the realm of the spirit. Awake thou that sleepest and Christ will give you light. As you are raising this cry, see your family. As you are raising this cry, see the generation connected to your grace. Hallelujah. Two prayer points tonight and we're done. Two prayer points. Father, if you search for a man in this move of the spirit, here is one. Find me. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Find me as a worshiper. Find me as a man of God. Find me as a prophet. Find me as an apostle of the Lord. Find me as an instrument of fire. Se para catos que para ver na janela e para pegar a luz para as coisas para lá tá. Aleluia. Please listen. Let me establish the second prayer point. The Bible says, "Seeing then that we are surrounded, so we are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone." Listen very carefully. Seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Who are they? 
Alexander the way Apostle Babalola Archbishop Benson Idahosa they have joined the cloud of witnesses they are waiting as they see the formation of the move that returns Christ it says seeing then that we are surrounded by a so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside lay aside every weight listen and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance our generation has too many distractions it takes time to know god it takes focus to carry fire the kind of fire that is more than the fire for a service the fire for a generation no fill me up god fill me up god fill me up god fill me up Fill me up, God. One more time. Fill me up, God. Listen. I will pray a prayer for you today. You cannot afford to fail a generation. The anthem of Nigeria says, The labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. You are standing on the blood of saints that were martyred as a heritage, martyred as a testimony. There's no room for carelessness. There is no room for church and religion. You must allow yourself to be stretched from border to border to sustain the capacity to host the size of God that is coming upon the earth. Hallelujah. There are three graces that will fall in this place tonight before we round up. Number one is a grace for spiritual hunger. Listen to me. Please listen. I'm about to pray for you. Hunger is a proof of health. When someone gets sick, one of the first things that goes wrong is appetite. The moment you lose appetite is a sign to any doctor that something is wrong. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. I want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. I want to dwell over every limitation in my life. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Blow, blow. May that grace come upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands all through this auditorium. I release that grace. I call for that grace from the depth of the spirit. A hunger for the things of God. A hunger for the things of God. A hunger for prayer. A hunger for fasting. A hunger that nothing in time can drive. I impart upon you 
the hunger that drove the ancient to the secret place the hunger that drove our fathers to the place of power the hunger that drove them to receive the eyes of the spirit The Lord is opening my eyes and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing an eagle. An eagle is a representation of two things, vision and the prophetic. That means illumination, spiritual illumination and the prophetic. I'm seeing the number 31. 31 people are stepping into this anointing. Take that grace right now, inside, outside. I shift you by the Spirit of God. Step in, please just help those under the anointing so they don't enjoy themselves. Step into that dimension in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. I command a welling up of those dimensions from your spirit man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more prayer and we are done. I know that many of you are waiting for me to minister and all of that. We will shift all of that and we will do it. Let's, let's teach the word. Let's understand this thing. And then I can have the time to prophesy. We will pray for the sick. We will just minister. Um, we will use tomorrow and we will make, we'll make the last session a miracle service. And then we can just flow and minister. But this that you are receiving... Is something that will change your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Bring the lady that will shout now under the anointing. Please bring her for me. The power of God. Loud to the hearing of everybody. It's time to shift you to levels in the spirit. My friend, this man, this man, Yes, I see the angel of the Lord pouring oil upon him. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Hallelujah. Two minutes and we're done. I'm not going to. Hallelujah. Hold on. The angel of the Lord is bringing me here. There, is, there are two people here. Um, I just saw what looked like light. There is a very strong anointing. Just this room. I'm talking to you. You step into that dimension. Allah subra haskidi baladushi adabratuskidi. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last grace that you must receive. Please listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. You see, these things are not just charismatic manifestations of men of God who want to show that they are anointed. No, no. When you see the thing you have done with God and God brings you to a level, you are driven by the compassion of destiny more than all of these things. These are specific things that God wants to do in the life of people. Hallelujah. The last prayer point that I'm going to pray for you You see, there is a quickening of the spirit that must come upon you, not only to pray,
but to heighten your discernment. Please listen. This our generation has almost zero discernment. We do not sustain the fortitude to, to access the impulses of the Spirit. Part of the indices to measure spiritual maturity is discernment. The ability to perceive that sense of perception in the Spirit is very powerful. And so we need a lavish manifestation of that grace. In the name that is above all names, I lift my hands and I stand here with the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare that men and women who must step into this grace right now, this this grace for discernment even by the ministry of the Holy Spirit I decree unto you in the name of Jesus step into that dimension now I activate your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit and I decree in the name of Jesus begin to understand the impulses of the Spirit In the name of Jesus Christ. I place upon you by the Spirit an intelligence that can help you read the writings on the wall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise for tonight. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you will continue to live our lives grant us access to your light we will not fail you as a generation in the name of Jesus Christ hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.